We now continue with the sermon. It will be preached on the gospel that we heard a few moments ago, uh, Matthew 16, 21 to 26. We start with a prayer. Lord, we pray that you would pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts now and strengthen us, comfort us with the good news of salvation. In the name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen. The grace of our Lord and God's peace be with all of you today and always. Amen. What were you thinking? The parents arrive home from a vacation. The house is an absolute disaster. Empty beer bottles all over the place. They find their 20-year-old daughter crashed on the couch, stinking, hungover. As they go through the house, they found about... They find about 10 more of her friends in the same condition, smelling, crashed, here and there, hungover. First words out of their mouth, Honey, what were you thinking? We have prohibited you from having parties when we're not here. What were you thinking? The principal calls the parents up to inform them that their 12-year-old boy was in a fight with another kid. Uh, the 12-year-old boy had got a bad grade. And the other kid, very smart, never gets bad grades, called their son an idiot. You are not too bright. You're an idiot. Well, their son gave him a good one right in the nose, almost breaking his nose. Parents get there. What were you thinking? We have told you over and over not to fight, that violence does not resolve these things. What were you thinking? See, our thoughts are very important. They, what we think reflects what's, on, what's in our heart and so often determines the decisions we make, the words that we speak, and the actions that we take. One time, one time Jesus, in so many words, said to Peter, what were you thinking? Let's listen to their conversation. The word says, From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. I just want to imagine scolding Jesus. You know, take him aside. You know, I got to. Wow. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Jesus had explained to his disciples his plan to go to Jerusalem and to be beaten up and to be tortured and to die on a cross. And when Peter heard that, he just, no, he didn't want any of it takes Jesus aside, scolds him, says, no way. Okay, now he had good intentions. He did not want harm to come to his dear Savior. But imagine that. He, he, so he scolds Jesus, says, says, no way, you can't do that. I don't want you to go there and suffer and have these problems. Okay. And Jesus, in so many words, turns to him and says, Peter, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? He says, Peter, you know, if I think about you know, what's easiest for me, then I'm not going to be thinking about my father and I'm not going to be obeying his holy will. Peter, if I think about what's most comfortable for me, I'm not going to carry out my mission. Peter, if I think about my own health and security at this point, you know, I'm not going to save the sinners from death and hell and Satan is going to win. So, Peter, you know what? I'm going to go to Jerusalem because I have my mind set on the things of my father. And I love him very much, and I, I obey his holy will. See, Peter, I am going to go to Jerusalem. I'm, I'm going to get tortured, and I'm going to take on the whipping and the beating and the spitting and the mocking. Because, Peter, I'm thinking about you and these 11 friend of, friends of yours and all the sinners, and I love all of you very much. Peter, I'm going to go to Jerusalem, and I will go to the cross, and I will suffer the curse of hell itself. Because I'm thinking about you, Peter, and 
your 11 friends and all the sinners out there. And I'm also thinking about these people who are going to live 2,000 some years in the future in the year 2020 in Las Vegas. And oh, I dearly love them too and I want all of you in heaven with me. Jesus didn't have to say to Peter, what were you thinking? He knew what he was thinking because he's got himself, right? And so he just told him what he was thinking and he declared it and he says, you do not have in mind the things of God, the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. He says, Peter, you're, you're not thinking about the things of God. You're thinking about the things of this world, but the sinful flesh. With these words, uh, well, we see that and Jesus teaches us that, that our thoughts, what we're thinking is so important. And as I mentioned before, well, they're a reflection of what's going on in here in our heart and they determine what's going on in here, determines the words we speak and the actions we take, the decisions we make. Isn't that true? And Jesus makes it very clear when it comes to the very most important thing in life, our souls, there's only two ways that we're going to be thinking. There's only two ways for people to be thinking. We're either going to be thinking and have our minds set on the things of God, or we're going to be thinking about and have our minds set on the things of this world. Sinful things. Things of the sinful flesh. Let's do the negative first. So when, when we're thinking about worldly things, we do whatever we want, without taking into account the will of the Father, of the commandments. Let's do what we want. We do what's most comfortable for us without thinking of if that really is harming us in our faith. We do, well, what's fun and what feels good without really thinking about whether that's going to harm or offend other people. See, when we have our minds set on the things of this world. We do whatever we want, whatever feels good, whatever is comfortable, without thinking about whether the decision we're making or the action we're taking or the words we're speaking is harming our faith. In the end, when we're thinking of the things of this world, we're thinking of whom? Number one, we're thinking about ourselves and we're acting in a way, in a way that satisfies ourself and our sinful human flesh. That's how we were born in that always thinking, we're born in that, always thinking about ourselves, right? Give you some examples. And, and, and because we battle, like I mentioned before in this service, we battle with the, we're in the church militant, we're battling with the human flesh, so we often fall into that. You know, when we are thinking about the things of this world, we let anger control us, and we post whatever words, harmful words, hurtful words on Facebook to get it off our chest because it feels good. And if we don't have Facebook, then we sometimes just tell that person right to their face. And we feel we have a right to do that sometimes because, well, in the end we're right and their opinion's wrong. So I'm going to let them have it. It feels good. When we have our minds set on the things of this world, we are... Husbands and wives that are very selfish, thinking that my spouse is here to serve me. What in this relationship, what's in it for me? Okay. That's how we go about our married life when our mindset is on the things of the world. When, our, when we are thinking about the things of the world, we, we do whatever we want with our free time without taking into account maybe our wife, our kids, or maybe service in the church. When we have our mindset on the things of this world, we drink however much alcohol we want to drink at that party because it feels good to us. And for crying out loud, it's a free world, right? When we're thinking about the things of this world, we work as long as we want without taking into account maybe going to church or more time in the Word or how it affects my family life because it gives me satisfaction and I also like the extra money. Here it is. Here it is. Having our minds set on the things of this world harms our relationships, leads us to a life of loneliness and bitterness in the end, harms us emotionally, but most of all,
thinking about the things of this world, of the human nature, you know what? Drives us away from God, destroys our faith, and if left unchecked, takes us straight to hell. And Jesus doesn't want that. Desperately does not want that. He does not want us just thinking about the things of this world, walking farther and farther away from him. Jesus doesn't want that. And so, well, what did he do about it? We talked about that. He came down here and he never once had his mind set on the things of this world, did he? Not once. Jesus came down here and he always thought and he, always had his, he was always thinking about the things of his Father. Never once sinned. Always obeying the Father's will. Always being faithful to the Word of God. And so what did he do? Jesus, he carried out his mission, went to Jerusalem, suffered on a cross, paid for our sins, rose on the third day, won salvation for us, because he thought of the right things. He th was thinking about godly things all the time. And he won our salvation. And now up, from up in heaven, he continues to think of the right things, Jesus, doesn't he? Sent his Holy Spirit at that right moment. And in the, with the power of the gospel, created faith in our hearts, making us his dearly loved children, forgiving all of our sins. And he continues all throughout our life, Jesus, thinking of the right things, loving us, guiding our lives, working everything out for our good, being our king, governing our hearts. And he also has made us new creatures, hasn't he? And he gives us advice. He says, as I think of only the right things, he encourages us to do the same. And he tells us these words. And I'm reading from Romans. We heard this verse a few a few moments ago in the service when we read the second lesson. So I'm reading from Romans chapter 12. Hear the word of the Lord there. It says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, Jesus was saying what he said. He tells us what, the same thing he told Peter. Okay. Peter, well, like, what are you thinking, right? But he said, you're thinking of, of the wrong things. You're thinking of the worldly things. But he goes, no, think of, think of the things of God. Set your mind on godly things. And he gives us that encouragement. Our thoughts are so important, brothers and sisters in the faith. And Jesus told us, how to, what does that look like when our minds are set on the things of God? Well, he kind of goes on a little bit of a step-by-step -step. when he talks to Peter and the other 11 disciples. He said, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. So when we're, when we're thinking, when we're thinking and have our mindset on the things of God, we deny ourselves anything that may harm our faith. When our th thoughts are on the things of God, we are willing and ready to deny ourselves too much alcohol, sinful relationships, videos, uh, YouTube videos, TV programs, and movies that lead us into sin, conversations that lead us to gossip. We're ready to deny ourselves those things because our minds are set on the things of God. Jesus continues. The word says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. When our thoughts are on the things of God, well, we're, we are ready and willing to endure anything that might come as a result of being a Christian. Yeah. So when, when we're thinking about the things of God, we are, well, we work honestly even if that may mean earning less money. Okay. When we're thinking of the things of God, we deal with that emotional condition or that physical condition without being angry with God, without questioning God. When our mindset is on, are on, the, things of God, is on the things of God, well, we, we take care of that loved one with patience and love, even when that loved one is not so patient and loving with us back. Bearing that cross. 
Jesus continues. He says, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? When our minds are on the things of God, our faith is the most valuable thing to us. The forgiveness of sins is our most precious treasure. And the very most important thing in life is getting to heaven. When our minds are set on the things of God, we are willing to give up and lose anything in this world to not lose Jesus. When our minds are set on the things above. What were you thinking? Often, almost always, that phrase is used when someone has done something foolish. Right? What were you thinking? But here it is, the, the word think, it, it's often also used uh, in a positive way. An example, Mother's Day, right? And the kids wake up early and surprise their mom with a delicious breakfast in bed, and she says, thanks for thinking of me. That's so nice. Yeah, that's, thanks for thinking of me, guys. Or the husband knows that the wife had a very difficult day at work or at home with the kids, and she's, ah, right? And he goes out and buys her some flowers, and it makes her day. And she says, honey, thanks for thinking of me. That was really nice that you thought of me. Now, there's so many times, way too many times, when Jesus looks down from heaven and could say, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? As we fall into those sins over and over again. But what does Jesus do with us? Embarrass us? Yell at us? No, he doesn't. He leads us back to him, to his word, to repentance. And when he does, he forgives us completely restores us, strengthens us, and encourages us. Brothers and sisters in the faith, let us daily immerse ourselves in God's word. Let us daily repent of our sins, always trusting in Jesus for our salvation. Let us daily bask in the joy of our salvation. Yes, rejoice in the fact that we know we're going to heaven. Let us daily be on our knees asking God, our Father, for help so that we live our lives to the glory of God and then Jesus will look down and say, well, nothing makes me happier than when my children think of me. Amen.